Both the Cincinnati Bengals and Denver Broncos improved to 6-0 Sunday. Cincinnati manhandling the Bills and Buffalo. Denver escaping Cleveland with an overtime victory. Both games are pretty much par for the course from what we've seen from the two undefeated so far this season. Denver using its defense to bail out a struggling offense. And Cincinnati really winning in all phases of the game, but especially showing signs of life on the offensive side of the football. Let's start with the Bengals. 243 yards passing, three touchdowns, no interceptions for Andy Dalton Sunday. Just the latest impressive performance from Dalton in what's become a breakout season. Certainly of all the factors playing into Cincinnati's 6-0 start, Dalton's consistency and his development have to be among the most encouraging for Cincinnati right now. It helps that he can hand the ball off to Jeremy Hill and Gio Bernard. That duo combined for 119 yards and two touchdowns Sunday, one from each player. And seven different receivers caught passes, led not by A.J. Green, who had three catches for 36 yards, but by Marvin Jones, who caught nine passes for 95 yards. And that's just another example of the progression of the Cincinnati offense, which can hurt teams with several different receivers, tight end Tyler Eifert, or that backfield combo of Hill and Bernard. The Broncos' D, meanwhile, bailed out the offense again. Three more interceptions for Peyton Manning, who now has 10 on the season. The silver lining on offense for the Broncos, if there was one, is that Ronnie Hillman broke loose for a 100-yard game against the Cleveland front that's had trouble stopping the run this year. It's becoming pretty clear that the Broncos are going to have to continue winning ugly, although they might have the horses to do it. They certainly look like they can on defense. They continue to force key turnovers, like Aqib Tlaib's pick six early in the game and an interception of Josh McCown late in the fourth quarter that sent that game to overtime. And the run game, if it could get going even a little bit, would take some pressure off Manning and allow the Broncos to control the ball even when Manning's not having a good game and he's yet to really have one this season. The question for later down the road is would the Broncos consider shutting down Peyton before the playoffs? I don't think they'll bench him at any point for Brock Osweiler unless Manning's too hurt to continue, but the Broncos now sit at 6-0 with a comfortable lead in the division. They're obviously playing at this point for the number one seed and for home field advantage and all those things you want in the playoffs, but should they get to the point where they have the division locked up and they maybe can't secure the number one overall seed or can't secure home field advantage, they might have to consider giving Manning a couple weeks off just to see if he can sit and heal a little bit and then come back strong for the playoffs. Right now, that improvement they were hoping for from him hasn't happened. They're still winning in spite of it, as they did Sunday to get to 6-0, along with the Bengals, also undefeated on the year. For SI.com, I'm Chris Burke.